Hey everyone, Tim Clapham here from hellolux.com and this is a quick tutorial on how we can use hair to generate type. Um, hair renders really fast and you can create a really nice artistic kind of brush stroke effect. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm just going to choose File, Merge Objects and I've got this Illustrator artwork. Um, if we hold down Alt here we can just bypass that import dialog. Let's just center that. You can see we've got the Hello from Hello Lux. Now the thing with this is it's like really flat, it's 2D. Okay, so the first thing that you really want to do is to um, go through and manipulate this. So switch to points mode, grab some of these points, and let's just pull them like so. And what the aim here is to uh, kind of reposition all of these so that we don't have this 2D approach. Okay, so I've gone through, manipulated my spline, and you can see that now we have a nice shape so that the uh, curves don't kind of intersect each other and we can get some areas that are in front of others and other areas that are behind. Now there's a couple of ways that I wanted to show you to do this and um, the first one is using MoGraph so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come up add in a sphere object. Set this to be say 15 um, icosahedron and if we just have a look at that you can see the reason I've done that is just so we get a nice even distribution of points around that sphere. With that sphere selected, let's hold down shift, come up, add in a matrix object. And that matrix object, we're going to set that to be object mode. So basically, it's going to clone onto all of those vertices. Next, let's right click on this sphere and choose Cinema 4D tags and add in an align to spline tag. We grab our hollow path, drop that in as the spline path. And there we go. So I'm going to add a keyframe here for position, jump to the very end, set this to 100, and add another key. Now the interpolation of our spline is quite important. It's currently um, the intermediate points are set to uniform. The number there are 128. Now you don't need to use uniform. It just means that when we're using the aligned spline, it will travel along in the uniform manner. Um, of course, our F curve will ease in and out, as is the way with the default F curves you know what that's fine you can go through and animate that in a much more natural and interesting way so now i'm going to hide this let's select this matrix object let's choose MoGraph. come down and add in a tracer now i want this tracer to be below the matrix object in the hierarchy and let's just grab all of these and put them below the path just because we want it to trace the matrix object um, so it really needs to come after so now if we press play you can see we get this result looking a little bit clunky so what we can do on our tracer object is open up the parameters instead of linear let's choose B spline and intermediate points I'm going to choose natural and you can see now it starts to smooth itself out let's just press play nudge through just so we get to the end so we can have a look at the result so you can see now we've got all of these splines that are generated because it's essentially tracing all of the vertices and generating a spline from those. You may need to find that you need to set this uh, the tracer up higher, maybe to 32, depending on the path that you're tracing along. Of course, if we render, however, we don't get anything. So let's come down to our materials, create shader, and add a hair material. Now, by default, you get this lovely brown color. So let's just make this a little bit more interesting, maybe a nice magenta-y kind of pinky color. Um, something like so and let's just make it a bit lighter at one end perhaps the great thing is we can grab this material and we can just drop that onto our tracer and when we render it we will now get a result it's already looking fairly interesting but how about if we add a light into the scene and let's just uh, pull this light somewhere over here and up a bit higher Something like so, and let's set this to generate shadows. And now let's render and have a look. Oh, there, there you go. Now it's starting to look even more interesting. We could select our hair material, come to thickness, and let's set this to be maybe 0.1 at the beginning and end, and render. And we'll see the uh, strands themselves a little bit more clearly. Now we've got a weird thing happening here, and you may find that your sphere flips as it travels along the path as well. It is all looking very uniform at the moment. I'm going to come back in here. Let's set these to be 1, 1. And let's add some variation of, say, 0.5. We could also come here, copy this. Let's add in some backlit color. 
paste that gradient into there let's come to our illumination let's increase the roughness right up now let's render and have a look okay and you can see it's starting to look a little bit more solid a little bit more interesting it's still very uniform so how about we take our matrix object we come to MoGraph and add in a random effector and this random effector we can use to randomize the position of all of those matrices on that sphere so let's just set this to be say 20 on all three and I'm going to choose random mode noise UV with an animation speed of say 50 and let's set that scale right down small and basically that's going to stop our hair all being so uniform because we're on our vertices of our sphere and our sphere has a very even distribution all of our lines look very even by randomizing the position of all of those matrices it should make our result a little bit more interesting so there we go and if we just stop at this point and have a quick render and there we go and you can see it's starting to look quite a bit nicer we're maybe randomizing it a bit too much let's set that to say 15 and 0 on z rewind once again let's just press play now you could if you wanted to actually animate the radius of that sphere so you could get thicker and thinner lines as you travel along your object and the great thing about this solution is it is of course a 3d object so we're looking at it from the front at the moment um, and you can see it's starting to take on a, almost like a brush like appearance but we could of course uh, come in and look at this from any angle that we like so it's a fairly simple technique but it can achieve some quite nice results and fairly quickly because we're using our hair render now that's one way of achieving this I just want to show you another option for creating a very similar animation but using a slightly different method and for this I'm going to use X particles so I'm just going to add in a system and let's add in an emitter okay and this emitter under the object tab I'm going to choose object and I'm going to drag my sphere into here and I'm going to choose object volume so if we press play and have a look now you can see we get this interesting result but well, we don't really want to do that what we want to do is we want to switch to our emission tab and let's set the emission to be pulse um, and what I want to do is just emit on the very first frame so I'm going to set the emission to be pulse uh, length one and rather than emit all frames I'm going to set this to be um, one and one like so so now if we rewind and press play you can see we get this burst of particles right at the very beginning so let's set that speed to be zero let's have a look now and of course we just get this little collection of particles down here now the nice thing about this is they're in the volume so they're already randomized around and we can adjust the birth rate to um, increase or decrease the number of particles let's just set that to be say a hundred for now just so that everything happens a little bit quicker next thing is come up to our system again and let's add in a modifier and the modifier I'm going to use for this which is just out the top of the capture area is cover target so choose your cover target modifier and then just grab our sphere drop that in as the target object and the operation that we want to choose is object volume so we want to keep those particles in that volume what they're going to try and do is stay within that volume as the sphere moves around so if we press play now you can see that some of the particles do but some of them are left behind and that's because it's moving really fast so we need to increase this tolerance so if we just bring that tolerance up nice and high let's just press play and there we go and you can see there are our particles following along so we're essentially creating the same thing as we did before with MoGraph and the matrix object let's just come up to the system and where we have our generator objects let's come down and choose trails and now if we press play you can see we're now generating trails just as we did before so we can grab our hair and we can drop that onto the trail object and we can render it and you can see the result of course the trail object works in a very similar way to the tracer but what we want to do here is we want to set the trail length to be the full length of our document and um, the other thing is set the type here to be b-spline and we set the intermediate points to be natural and I'm going to set that up to say 32 so it's nice and rounded let's just rewind and press play and see what happens now because we're working with particles of course we can do anything else we want to those particles as well but now you can see we've achieved a very very similar result to the result we had before now you might be thinking well what's the point of showing me how to do this in MoGraph and X particles well the reason I wanted to show you in MoGraph is because not all of you have got X particles and it's a great technique 
But the reason I wanted to show it to you with X particles is X particles has um, a really cool caching system. So if we come down and choose other objects, cache object, we can then choose to build the, uh, the cache. It's now going to calculate this. Now the great thing here is it's going to calculate this not only for the particles, but also for our trail object. And that's the big difference. With MoGraph, you've got no way of caching that tracer. So if you want to render this over network render, whether you're using uh, net render or team render or deadline or whatever you're using, chances are with the tracer object, you're going to get spurious results. With X particles, you can use the uh, caching system and you can see that we get a nice cached trail. So all of those splines are cached. We can save that out and we can render that over our network without any problems at all. Now this example that I've shown you here, um, very quick to make, not the most exciting animation you've ever seen. But of course you can take this a lot further. You could uh, animate the radius of the sphere to change the width of the line. You could um, adjust the animation on the aligned spline so it's a lot more natural and it would already be a huge improvement. And don't forget of course that this is 3D so we can do whatever we want. We can fly around it, we can be wherever we want. So hopefully it gives you some idea of the kind of things that are possible using this really simple technique and because we're using hair, nice and quick to render and um, if we just have a quick look here you can see here's an example uh, which is very similar to the one that we've just made. Um, but we could take that a lot further. We could, uh, in fact, put the camera at the top of the H and we would get a result that looks something like this. And you can see already that it's, you know, it's looking a lot more interesting, a lot more dynamic. You could even, if you're using X particles, you could render it with the particles visible. Um, so you get those nice dots along the front of the trail. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. And if you did, don't forget to head on over to hellolux.com where there are plenty more Cinema 4D tutorials. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all around.